Hey y'all, TRG here, back with another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the potential for significant severe weather early next week. Let's go into today's video. Here is the Storm Prediction Center Day 6 Outlook, and we have a very large 15% chance for severe weather all the way from extreme northern Illinois, which does include central Illinois, by the way, down towards St. Louis, Missouri, through a, var a very large chunk of Missouri into Tulsa, Oklahoma, and also just north of the DFW in Texas, as well as including Little Rock, Arkansas. That is a very large and quite concerning 15% chance for severe weather. Here's a closer look at it. So if you see your town in here or your county in here, take note if you are or are not inside this 15% yellow area for severe weather. Then we have a much larger area for day seven. This is a bit of a uh, a bit of a larger region, as you could tell, quite considerably larger here. Uh, but I do want to note there is still a bit of confidence issues with this. So this is a general area of where we could see severe weather. We still have to narrow down some specifics. There's actually going to be a very large majority of people in here who may not end up seeing severe weather by the time the day one risk rolls around. Remember, this is a 15% chance for severe weather every 25 miles of a given point, which makes this actually quite a high-end risk for severe weather, guess what? Seven days out, which was quite ridiculous. So we are really looking at, uh, this is going to be for the 27th of February here, as well as into the 28th. I believe this is going to be more of a overnight threat for severe weather from what I'm seeing as of right now on the model runs. I think it's going to be into the evening overnight of the 27th into a very large chunk of the morning and afternoon of the 28th of February here. So make sure you guys are already getting those tornado preparedness plans ready to go because this will most likely end up being a all hazards threat for severe weather. Let's take just a bit of a deeper dive into what we could expect here. This is February 27th at give or take 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here, and we have a very large pool of instability that is available. This means the potential for thunderstorms is going to be present inside this area, which has instability. Now, by every single model run and just getting new information here, uh, the cap is getting less and less. So we started at like 115 uh, sin out here here, negative 115 cent out here, and we are down to, in some spots, 12, and other spots don't even have a capping in place anymore on the GFS model run. Now, this is just a single model run, but this single model run has been consistent for days on days upon end right now, so that is why they've added that 15% chance for February 27th here. This is your supercell composite, basically just saying the potential for tornadic ingredients to be in place in a specific area. This doesn't mean your tornado threat is going to be high end, it just means the potential for tornadoes is going to be present within a given area, which in this case is just where the Storm Prediction Center has their 15% chance for severe weather. So right now, I do completely agree with the SPC. I think they have a fantastic outlook for it already. But on uh, February 28th here, if we go forward, here's February 28th. And well, not a whole lot on the new model run. It really, just a bit of a risk in the southern United States. And that is it. Why? Instability. Our instability is very, 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 very thin out here, which is a classic February thing, obviously. Uh, so, honestly, I personally don't see a whole lot on the 28th. That's just my opinion. Again, the professionals have a very large 15% chance for severe weather out in this area for the 28th. So, we will just have to continue to monitor this and see how it progresses. Now, specifics are still very far and few between. We do know that this is most likely going to end up being a all-hazards threat. We also know that this will most likely end up being quite a significant severe weather threat, but we don't exactly pinpoint nor know for exactly who. who. Uh, you know, we can really say this entire area is what we're watching right now, but eventually we're going to be able to nar narrow it down more and more and pinpoint who's going to be in the biggest risk. And right now, it is still just simply a little bit too far out to pinpoint that. You know, normally we can't pinpoint this stuff until two, sometimes three days out. So we're still going to have to give it a quite considerably longer amount of time here. What's causing this threat for severe weather is a very large trough ejection way out here in the western United States combined with another trough and or short wave out here in the central United States. These two are going to combine on the 28th, which is why we have that large 15% chance for severe weather because we could see severe weather out here. However, it is all about that instability factor. If we don't have cape, we don't have storms. That's just a fact. So we will just have to determine how much instability we have, where that instability, instability is located, 
how far north it goes in order to determine how big your severe threat will be on the 28th. Now, backing it up here to the 27th, this is why I think we're going to have a bit more of a substantial risk. We went over this in yesterday's stream on the 21st. We have a very strong amount of southwesterly flow. This is going to be able to enhance the potential for dew points, temperatures, and instability to rise considerably further to the north than what we would normally see for February. And we can easily see this if we turn on over to our maximum uh, potential here for Cape. So this is the high end amount of instability here according to the GFS model. And notice we don't really have a lot of instability, but it is widespread. So there's not really, as of now at least, there's not really a focused area of high-end instability. It's a widespread amount of uh, close to moderate instability here, which is why, once again, we do have that very large 15% chance for severe weather out here from the Storm Prediction Center. Now, again, this is large. You know, you may be saying, oh, this looks relatively small compared to the Day 7 risk. Like I said, I think that Day 7 risk actually is going to shrink a little bit more. Uh, we'll just have to see. And also, don't forget, we could see increased probabilities. They could increase this to 30%. I would be shocked, but as of now they have maintained both of these risks with a 15% chance for severe weather, uh, which is exactly what we were anticipating in yesterday's stream to be added today. Uh, just over 51 million people are at risk for severe weather. So that is a lot of people at risk for severe weather. And like I said, not everybody inside this risk will be seeing severe weather. And even people outside of this risk area could see severe weather as well, which is why we still need to monitor it and wait and watch. It's still a little bit too far. Like I said, normally it's three, two days out when we start talking about specifics and your all hazards threat, unless we're like really, really confident, which right now, you know, with the, with the uh, trough projection that we have here, a very large trough out to the west and a short wave uh, slash elongated trough here. Uh, it, it's a little bit of an uncertainty here regarding if those trough, uh, those trough projections will combine, when they will combine, what the atmosphere will do when they combine, how they're going to interact with each other. Each model run is varying between those different concerns there. And in regards to the snowfall potential here, I don't see a whole lot. Uh, I do think we could see some isolated accumulations on the northern edge of the trough here, probably, if anywhere, up in North Dakota, South Dakota, northern Minnesota is going to be the place that I would watch the most. I don't see a widespread snowstorm for any snow lovers out there. I'm not seeing it. You know, last second on the GFS model run is the system exits on the 29th that shows a bit of a snow system. Not really a storm out there for New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, right along the Appalachian Mountains, but I really don't see a whole big potential with that. So if you're a snow lover, I don't think this is going to be a system that's going to give you a lot of snow. And, you know, I made that point about six days ago on our live stream. I think we're pretty much done with winter. So if you are, you know, if you haven't seen snowfall, um, unfortunately, I don't think you're going to be seeing it unless you're in like the Rockies, which in that case, you probably have already seen the snowfall. Uh, but anyways, here on the uh, February 27th here, you know, we could start seeing some thunderstorms develop as early as 5, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, at least the ingredients will be in place for thunderstorms to develop at that time. If they actually do, it's going to be fully up to Mother Nature and whatnot, but we will just have to continue to monitor it. Um, here's your wind shear, and you can see, once again, there's, well, according to this model, there really is a concentrated place of higher wind shear. It's up here in Illinois and uh, northern Indiana, uh, but there's not really... Uh, if, I mean, that's a lot of wind shear. I haven't looked at this myself, but that is a lot of wind shear. Uh, you know, we have a quite considerable amount. This is really a decent amount of wind shear uh, across the board. So I don't think wind shear is going to be an issue. Um, you know, you don't have a concentrated area of like a, an insane amount of wind shear, except for where that environment will most likely be capped out in central Indiana and western Indiana. Uh, but really, you know, if you're in the green or the yellow area for shear, that is plenty amount of shear for uh, any type of severe weather threat there. So I don't think we're going to have much of an issue with wind shear. I think the number one factor is going to be that capping. If that capping stays in place, severe weather is not going to be much of a concern in that given area, which like I said, model run by model run, the GFS model run is taken off that instability or rather taken off that capping from the instability, basically meaning your threat for severe weather is increasing which uh, with each model run, which is why they added that 15% chance for severe weather. Once again, this is from the Storm Prediction Center official forecast here. Every 25 miles of a given point, you've got a 15% chance for severe weather. So make sure you guys are prepared 
preparing for the threat of severe weather. I just wanted to make this video real quick, just for anybody who doesn't like to watch my live streams. If you guys do like to watch my live streams, I'll be live uh, probably an hour either. I've already been live for an hour or, you know, uh, I'll be live in an hour. It depends on what time this goes up. Uh, this is probably going to go up at 7 o'clock, so I imagine this will be up just after I end my live stream. So in that case, I will be live tomorrow once again at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to give y'all yet another daily update for the threat for severe weather. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and I hope you guys stay safe out there. Goodbye.